Hello, welcome to today's session. Today on X-rays, we'll be looking at energy of X-rays. In our last session, we were able to see the difference between hard and soft X-rays, and we saw the energy the X-ray do carry depends on the kinetic energy that the cathodes were moving with. And this kinetic energy depends on the accelerating potential. Therefore, simply the accelerating potential determines the energy of these X-rays. For any given accelerating potential, so in a certain, if the X-ray tube has a certain accelerating potential, then the X-rays that will be produced will have a range of wavelengths depending on their energy. So for a certain accelerating potential, we'll be having a range of X-rays, that is a range of wavelength of the X-rays that we'll have. And this energy, we are getting it from the kinetic energy of the cathodes. And the kinetic energy of the cathodes is given by EV. That is, the kinetic energy equals to EV, where E is the electron charge, this is the electron charge, and the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to power negative 19, and V is the accelerating potential. This is the potential that is giving the cathodes the year speed this is the accelerating potential. And therefore, if uh, we have one EV, then it is equivalent to, so this is one EV is equivalent to, this is the electron charge, so this is one voltage, therefore one times the electron charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to power negative 19, these are columns, this is charge, columns, and these are volts. Therefore, when you multiply this in terms of joules, then this will be 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 joules. Therefore, 1 EV is equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 joules. If we take a situation now where all the kinetic energy all the kinetic energy is being converted to X-ray energy. Therefore, all this kinetic energy, we are assuming now, remember we know that the kinetic energy is converted to both heat and X-rays. But if we just take one electron, just one, and assume that all its energy will be converted to X-rays, then those X-rays will have maximum energy because all their energy will have, all the kinetic energy of the cathodes have been converted to the X-ray energy. Therefore, the energy of the X-rays will be at maximum. And we noted that the energy of X-rays, noting that energy of X-rays is given by the Planck's constant times uh, the frequency, the higher the frequency, the higher the energy. So if this energy will be at maximum, then it means that the frequency is also at maximum. Therefore, when all the kinetic energy has been converted to the X-ray energy, then this EV, the kinetic energy of the cathodes, will be equal to the Planck's constant, this is uh, a constant, the Planck's constant, times the frequency of the X-rays. And we are saying at this point, the frequency will be maximum. And what wavelength corresponds to the maximum uh, frequency? It is the shortest wavelength. Therefore, it means that the strongest or X-rays with the highest energy have a very high frequency as well they have the shortest wavelength therefore in short you are saying that the kinetic energy of the 
cathodes will be equal to h times the maximum frequency that will be uh, the x-rays will be having. Also note that we have the x-rays moving with the speed of light and therefore we know that v equals to f lambda that is frequency times wavelength. Therefore, because we know the speed of x-rays is c, then c, the speed of the x-rays, will be equal to their frequency times wavelength. And we know when this frequency is at maximum, the wavelength is at minimum. So we can also talk of f maximum equals to the speed of the x-rays, which is the speed of light, divided by the wavelength minimum. And we know the speed of light is 3.0 times 10 to power 8 meters per second. Therefore, if we take EV equals to H times maximum frequency, then also we can have EV equals to H, the Planck's constant, multiplied by, instead of F maximum, we now have C over wavelength minimum. Therefore, EV, the kinetic energy, will also be equal to the energy of the x-rays, which can also be given by Planck's constant times speed of light divided by wavelength minimum. Please recall that Planck's constant equals to 6.63 times 10 to power negative 34 joules seconds. And we have the speed of light. Therefore, the maximum energy of X-rays will correspond to the minimum wavelength of the X-rays, and it will also correspond to the maximum frequency of the uh, X-rays. So simply the kinetic energy will be equal to the energy of the x-rays. And we are saying maximum because we can have a range of frequencies and also a range of wavelengths. So we are taking this energy at the point where we are assuming that all the kinetic energy has been converted to the x-ray energy. Let's look at a few examples on these formulas. So let's look at an example on the formulas that you've just derived. And one of them is here. Find the frequency and the energy of X-rays whose wavelength is 10 to power negative 10 meters in a vacuum. We're given the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to power 8. And we have the Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to power negative 34 joules seconds. So we are calculating two things. One is frequency, and the other one is the energy of the X-rays. So straight away to part one, we need the frequency. And we know that X-rays move with the speed of light C, and C equals to F lambda. And we already have the wavelength, and we have the speed of light. So this is 3 times 10 to power 8 equals to the frequency times the wavelength, which is 10 to power negative 10 uh, meters. And therefore, our frequency will be 3 times 10 to power 8 divided by 10 to power negative 10. F equals to 3 times 10 to power 8 times, from our knowledge on indices, we bring this to be a numerator, so that this will be 10 to power 10. And therefore, our frequency will be 3 times 10, 8 plus 10 to power 18. And this is frequency, and therefore, the units are hertz. So the frequency of the X-ray will be 3 times 10 to power 18 hertz. Then in part B, we need the 
energy of the x rays and the energy is given by so we need to calculate for the energy so at this point we have two options we can use the frequency or the wavelength that we have so the energy is h times f we've already calculated for the frequency we've seen it's 3 times 10 to power 18 and therefore it will be 6.63 times 10 to power negative 34 that is the Planck's constant we multiply that with the frequency which is 3 times 10 to power 18 hertz and this will give us uh, 10 6.63 times 3 maybe if i use my calculator here times 3 that gives us 19.89 times 10 negative 34 uh, we add 18 that will be negative 16 and therefore our answer the energy will be 1.989 times 10 to power negative 15 joules that will be the energy of the x-rays which would still have calculated by taking energy equals to Planck's constant times the speed of light we divide by the wavelength which we have there as 10 to power negative 10. Let's look at another example here. An x-ray tube has an accelerating potential of 100 kilovolts. Determine the shortest wavelength in its x-ray beam. So we want to determine the shortest, the shortest wavelength, meaning that we expect all the kinetic energy to be converted to the x-ray energy. Therefore, what we've been given here is the accelerating potential, which is 100 kilovolts. 100 kilovolts, this is 100,000 uh, volts, which we can express as 10 to power 5 volts. So we expect EV to be equal to HF maximum, and therefore our EV will be equal to H instead of F maximum. So this will also be C over minimum wavelength. And therefore, if we make the minimum wavelength to be the subject of the formula, then the minimum wavelength will be H uh, C divided by EV. Therefore, we go ahead now. We have the Planck's constant, our minimum wavelength will be the Planck's constant H, which is 6.63 times 10 to power negative 34. We multiply by C, which is 3 times 10 to power 8. We divide this by our charge, electron charge, 1.6 times 10 to power negative 19. Then we multiply by our accelerating potential, which we found to be 10 to power 5 volts. This will give us 6.63 times 3 divided by uh, 1.6 times, I take the powers of 10, I group them together. This will be 10 to power negative 34 times 10 to power 8 times, we bring this to the numerator, 10 to power 19, bring this to the numerator, times 10 to power negative 5. On calculating that, we'll find this is 12.43 times 10 to power negative 12, which gives us 1.243 times 10 to power negative 11 meters. This will be the shortest wavelength of our x-rays. We'll be looking at more examples in coming up videos. 
therefore and also i'll be sending to you some questions which you'll try to solve and see whether you've mastered the calculation on x-ray energy until we meet then have a nice time